Amen. Thanks so much, Judy. And I am so excited uh, that you are here today. I'm excited to be able to preach on Easter Sunday, and I'm excited because we are uh, wrapping up this morning uh, a series that we began last week, and I told you it was only going to be a, a two-part series, and um, but we've just had an awesome day today. Uh, it began early this morning at the sunrise service, and, and some of you uh, braved the rather chilly conditions this morning and came out and was a part of that at 6.30 this morning, and we're so glad that you were, and it was just awesome. Uh, I, I hope and I pray that some of you got here early enough to get a part of that uh, breakfast that we had out there. That was amazing. Thank you all so much. Those of you that participated in that and helped out and, and, and did all the things to make that happen. I mean, what, what a great job and uh, just, a, just a huge blessing. We had people here yesterday even uh, just serving and painting and cleaning and doing all kinds of stuff around the church. And we're just so very, very thankful for all of that. Today we get a chance to celebrate uh, something that's so very special to all of us and to the body of Christ, and that is the resurrection of Jesus. And it's something that we all look forward to, and, and not just today, but it's something we look forward to each and every day, right? I mean, it's something we talk a lot about, and it's something that is, is very, very meaningful to each and every person on this planet. And so I'm glad that you're here for that, but I'm also glad to get your attention just for a little bit here because uh, next week we are starting a brand new series that we're really excited about, and it's called The Abundant Life. And uh, the reason that we're wanting to tell you about that is, is it's gonna be a really important series, I think, for a lot of people. One of the things we're gonna be talking about is life hacks in the Bible. Life hacks in the Bible. How many of you know what a life hack is? All right, some of you do, all right. It's kind of been going around in the lingo nowadays. Life hacks are things that we can learn or that people can teach us that kind of help us live life better. And so one of the things in this series is we're gonna be just talking about simple instructions. We're gonna be talking about directions to help us to live life better. And uh, so as we talk about the abundant life, that Jesus has called us to, that he has uh, uh, gifted to us, that we're gonna be talking about the Bible, God's word, and how it has all sorts of little life hacks that we need, that we can use and, and apply to our lives to help us to live life abundantly and to, you know, uh, not just eternal life, by the way, because a lot of people misunderstand, but it's life to the full here and now. We're gonna be talking about important topics like uh, marriage, and we're going to be talking about relationships. We're going to be talking about parenting and, and raising children. And when it comes to our work or career and the life hacks from the Bible that go along with that, we're going to be talking about finding enjoyment and, and purpose and meaning out of life. And, and, and these are all some of the different life hacks that we're going to be talking about through this series that we're calling Abundant Life. And so uh, I hope that you can be here. I hope that you won't miss it. I hope that you will not only that, invite people to come along and, and, and take this journey along with us together. Um, so many more uh, very important topics that we're going to be addressing. And not only that, but to go back to something I mentioned at the very beginning of our service with our 40 days of prayer, we're also going to kind of be seeing how uh, prayer is an integral part, how it interweaves in that process of the abundant life. And so if you're taking that journey along with us, we're going to be, you know, kind of combining the two. Uh, so be sure to invite some people to come along with you. If you got your Bible with you this morning, uh oh, I dropped the breath mint. Uh, if you brought your Bible with you this morning, you can go ahead and get that ready because we're going to be looking at the book of Romans chapter 5, looking at verses 6 through 8, okay? So if you brought a Bible, uh, then you could do that. If uh, you didn't bring a Bible and would like to have a Bible, if you don't have one, we have a few that are out in the uh, gym and you can stop by the information table, pick one up, make that your own, okay? This is our gift to you. We want you to have a Bible. If you didn't bring a Bible, that's okay. We'll have the scripture on the, on the screen behind me uh, here this morning as well. 
And if you're new to the Bible and you're thinking, where in the world is Romans? Well, it's in the New Testament, the New Testament, the Old Testament. Old Testament is the first few books of the Bible. New Testament is the rest of that on the right-hand side if you're flipping it open. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things that I tell people, you know, Old Testament is uh, the BC, you know, before Christ. Uh, the uh, New Testament is the A- AD, which, you know, I kind of call it Advent uh, 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 of Christ. Christ, but it literally means the uh, 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 the year of our Lord, and so. But that's how to keep up with it: Old Testament, New Testament, and the sixth book of the New Testament is Romans. Okay, so if you get through the Gospels and then get to the sixth book, you'll get to the book of of Romans. If you're using an electronic device, we try to let everybody know, uh, you can log on to the Wi-Fi here, CCLG guest, God is love is the password. You got to log off of Clash of Clans for a little bit. Don't be doing that during the sermon this morning, all right? And uh, you can follow along there, okay? Romans chapter 5, beginning in verse 6. Here's what it says. You see, at just the right time, When we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely it says, will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man, someone might possibly dare dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let's pray together, okay? Father, we just thank you so much for your word. We thank you, Father, that your word is living and active. We thank you, Father, that you can speak to us now through your word, through the Holy Spirit. Father, we just pray that that is exactly what happens. Father, I pray that you will help me to get out of the way of of anything that you would like to say. Help me to... um, do my best to communicate your word clearly. Thank you so much for the promises that we will read this morning, for what they mean to us, how they have changed so many lives and how they can change everyone else's life as well. We pray this in Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. Well, like I said, this is part two of our series that we've been doing called Awake from Death to Life. And uh, if if you were here last week, you kind of know as we set the series up, as we spent some time talking about Palm Sunday and the buildup, as it were, to Palm Sunday. And as it leads us into Holy Week and Good Friday, some of you came to our Good Friday services this week as well over at at First Baptist Church downtown. And and how everything has been kind of been building up to this very epic moment. If you, if you didn't catch that, uh, we always encourage you, you can go to our webpage, you can find all the sermons that we have ever preached pretty much uh, for the last three or four years is on there. You can always get on there and, and listen if you'd like to. But I spent a lot of time this week thinking about what in the world does God want me to speak and preach on this morning? And I, I spent a lot of time, and, and I do each and every week, but Easter is always one of those special times. And, 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 I, and I, really, I really didn't want to do kind of the same old thing. I wanted to just kind of lay out God's message, whatever it was to us. And I got to be honest with you, you know, some sermons come easy right? Some sermons just kind of come together, and, 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 and especially when it comes to Easter, like I said, we're, we're tempted to want to kind of do the same old thing, say the, you know, go back to the Gospels and, and, and reread a lot of the same scriptures, which there's nothing wrong with, but, but as I was just seeking the Lord this week, man, this was one that God and I were wrestling with. We were wrestling on, and, and I think it was a lot just me getting in the way of what God wanted to say, and so um, I, I tell you all of that because the, the message that, that we're kind of going to be doing today. Here's what I believe. I believe, and, and, and I think I've said this before, you've probably heard me say this before, but, but I, I truly believe in God incidences in our life. I don't, I don't believe in coincidences. I believe, that, that I believe in God incidences, and sometimes we don't always know it. Sometimes we don't always see it. Sometimes we don't always recognize or acknowledge how God works, but I certainly do believe, and I hope that you do as well, in, in that God wants to move and act in our lives, in our daily lives. And, and, and sometimes, you know, we, we just don't give him his due diligence and we don't 
give him the attention that we, that we sometimes need to. But, but I do believe, and, and, and I've been praying, I want you to know, I've been praying that this would be a God-ordained moment in your life. Not because of me, not because of uh, you know, anything on the stage, none of, none of that stuff, but just because I believe God has you here for a purpose. And I believe God has a word for all of us. And, and so that's kind of what I've been praying about this week. And, and, and sometimes I think we limit ourselves. You know, God is limitless. I mean, he, he is not limited by anything, but we limit ourselves when it comes to God. And, and, and sometimes we just get in the way. Like I said, maybe it's busyness in our lives. Maybe uh, it, it's just denial or neglect of some kind. Maybe it, it's, it's something else in your life. But so often we miss those moments that I'm talking about. We miss those, those God-ordained or, moments. And, and I've been praying that, uh, that this morning would be a God-ordained moment for us, for me, for you, for, for everyone. I, I believe that God created you. He created me on purpose and for purpose. And, and I believe that there's times in our life where God is just pursuing us. And I see that all over the Bible and, 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 and God is just longing at times just, just to connect with us. And, and this could be the moment, this is the reason I'm saying this, this could be the moment where God gets your attention. And please don't, don't discredit that. Whoever, whoever you are, whatever you're dealing with, don't discredit that. As we've been seeking God's direction for this message, the scripture that he just, man, just really impressed on my heart was this Romans chapter five. I don't know if you've ever read the book of Romans before. I don't know if you've ever focused on chapter five or not, but Romans chapter five, as I read it this week, as I, as I studied it, I don't know about you, but this happens to me from time to time where I, I've really been needing an inspiration of some kind, right? I've really just needed, God, I just need you to come and do something in my life because you know I'm just kind of down right now and I need something that's real and personal. And, and, and you know it's not that I don't believe in God because I do, but sometimes Sometimes I just really need him just to kind of show up, whether that's through a loved one or, or, or a friend or, or if it's through a circumstance or an event in life, whatever it is, if it's through, you know, his word. And, and, and when I read these verses, man, I was like, Lord, thank you. This is it. This, this is the word. This is what you want for us and from us. And, and I just was thanking God and thanking God. And, and I was just so overwhelmed because that was a moment for me. I was just having this moment with God. And, and, and I know that some of you have, have been there, you've done that, you kind of had those moments with God too. And, and, and I hope, this is, this is where I'm going with what I'm talking about. I hope that this scripture that we just read and that we're gonna study here in Romans chapter five is something that is very meaningful for you today. And I want nothing, probably nothing more out of our morning together than for you to simply get the big picture of this text, of this scripture, of God's word, and what God is communicating to us today, because I think it's so very important for you to walk away with the big idea today, that would mean everything. That, I would, that, that really is what I, I want to do. And, and here's my promise if that happens, okay? Here, here's my promise to you. My promise is simply this. If you get this and if you get the big picture that we're talking about and, 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 and if I do an okay enough job just you know, getting out of God's way and letting him preach the word and, and communicate it, then, then what we're talking about today out of Romans chapter five can literally change your life. Not figuratively, literally change your life. I've seen it before in my own life. And it can literally just revolutionize everything for you. Maybe that's a bit of a warning this morning is that God's word is that powerful, that the Holy Spirit is that powerful. And, 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 and maybe you're here today and you're like, you know what, Will, listen, I just wanna get through the service, right? If I'm being honest, I'm here and I just wanna get through this, get through my next thing that I got going on. Listen, I, I understand that. I've been there before myself. But Romans chapter five here, I believe, is really at the heart of the gospel message. And I wanna to explain to you what I'm talking about. It's powerful. 
The gospel is powerful and this scripture is powerful. There's really nothing like it as we talk about Jesus and as we talk about who he is and as we talk about what he means to us and what he's done for us, really there is, there is so much truth and so much power that is just locked and packed into these verses. And, and, and we're gonna be talking about God. We're gonna talking about his character and really, you know, what I found about, you know, Bible verses like this and, and and really the God's word in general is it just kind of preaches itself. It really just kind of speaks the word itself. And, and, and really sometimes, like I said, the best thing is to do is just let it go. Paul says here, if you got your Bible still there, look in verse six. He says, at just the right time, at just the right time, what time? Just the right time. Not, not the wrong time, not, not the just about time, not, not, not the close enough time or the roundabout time. The Bible says at just the right time. And I, and I wanna just make an emphasis there because what he's talking about here is God's perfect time. He's talking about God's timing, the ordained time at just the right time, just as God had always planned it while we were still powerless. I want you to think about that statement for a moment. The Bible says, while we were still powerless, I don't know about you, but when I think of powerless, some pictures come to mind. When, when I think of powerless, I think of Popeye, not, not eating his spinach, you know? Some of you are thinking, who's Popeye? Is that, that's dating us, isn't it? Well, when I think of powerless, I think of me against Chuck Norris, right? That's what, I love, I love the quote here. When I slice onions, onions cry. That's good, right? It's me against Chuck Norris there, powerless. When I think of powerless, I, I think of my cell phone and, and getting to that last bar on my cell phone. Isn't the worst feeling? It's like, man, that's powerless. Now, at first, it seems like these two statements, they don't really go together. I mean, when is it ever a good thing to be powerless, right? I mean, that, that doesn't sound like a good thing. Certainly not at just the right time. I mean, usually those, that's not a really good thing at just the right time. That's usually a bad thing. I mean, you know, you think about it in life. I mean, that's usually our, our, our dead car battery as we're trying to head to work in the morning, right? That's not a good thing. I mean, that's powerless, that's helpless. I mean, what we're talking about, that, that, that's usually what happens when we're, when we're shopping in a grocery store and we get all our groceries in the cart and we get all the way up to the cashier and we put everything through the belt, you know, ring everything up, we slide our debit card and then it gets declined. Why? Because our debit card has been compromised. I mean, that's usually what I think of when I think of powerless at the right time, I mean, that's not such a good thing. That means like vulnerability, that means weakness. And, 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 and at first, I mean, it doesn't seem like these things kind of go together, does it? But God has a different plan in mind. And that's what he wants us to know. God has a different plan in mind. He, has, he, he plays by a different rule book, not by the rule book of the world that says powerlessness is weakness and, and that it's no good. His standards are higher. His ways are greater. And, and, and when we read the rest of this verse, it begins to make sense because it says, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for the ungodly. You see, this was God's plan all along. This was, this was what God had planned from the very beginning. And you say to yourself, well, well, well what, do you, what do you mean, how long? Well, according to the Bible, this has been God's plan all along since even before the foundations and the creation of the world. His plan was at just the right time, he would send his son Jesus on our behalf to die our death so that we may live. You see, that's his timing, that's his plan. 
1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 through 21. Listen to how this describes what we're talking about here. It says, for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from our ancestors, but with precious, with the precious blood of Christ a lamb without blemish or defect. Here, Peter is describing our lives before Christ. And as he's doing that, he's describing them as empty. And and that's so true, isn't it? I mean, those of you that are Christians, those that that you've been walking with the Lord, you know that before Jesus, man, life really was very empty. I mean, Jesus changed everything. He gave us purpose and meaning and significance. And, and, and he has become, as, as he's describing here, he's become the perfect sacrifice. That's the reason he's called the lamb here. He's the perfect sacrifice, the lamb of God without blemish, without defect, no sin, no transgression, no disobedience. He is pure and spotless. That's who Jesus is. And listen to what he says next. Verse 20. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him, you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him. So your faith and hope are in God. You see, Jesus was God's plan all along. Amen. I mean, he was God's plan all along. We see that from the very beginning before the foundations that that were the heavens and the earth were even spoken to existence. Jesus was the answer, is the answer. He was the remedy as it were to our problem of of, of pain. He was was the answer to our moral dilemma. The, the, The gospel of John, John says Jesus was the word in the beginning and he created everything. In fact, he says nothing that was made has been made except through him. And so, and so here's the really big picture here, okay? Remember I said, if you can get anything this morning, you need to see the really big picture here. And, and, and when I mean big picture, I mean, this is where the Old Testament and New Testament come together. Again, for those of you that are new to the Bible, you think, man, I don't really understand this, how it all works together. I mean, in, in the Old Testament, like thousands and thousands of years old, I mean, the New Testament, you know, close to 2000. I mean, I don't really understand how all this makes sense. Well, here's where, if you open your Bible up to the beginning book in Genesis and the end book, Revelation, here's where all of this stuff begins to make sense. And this is where Adam, you know, the first created man that we read about in Genesis and the Messiah are interwoven through history, all through Jesus. And, and if you go back to our main scripture this morning in Romans chapter five, and you move on down just a little bit, here's how I'm gonna, this is gonna make sense here in just a second, okay? Verse 12, just kind of follow along with me. If it doesn't make sense at first, hang in there. I promise it will. Verse 12, it says, therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, And in this way, death came to all people because all sinned, all of us have sinned. To be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not charged against anyone's account where there is no law, nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses and even over those who did not sin by breaking a, a command as did Adam, who is a pattern of the one to come. You see what Romans is trying to get us to understand here and what, the, and what we're trying to paint this very big picture so that you can really see it and understand it. And, and, and again, I would really even make an argument here that this is really, you know, like I said, I mean, the, the, this is the big idea of the gospel message. I mean, some of you have heard before, I mean, what, so you've heard the gospel and what is the gospel? This is really the big idea of the gospel. This is God's plan from the very, very beginning. God has always, listen to me, he has always been in control. And I mean, always been in control. 
even when, listen to me, when life seems chaotic and messy and, and when things seem out of control, he is in control. Even when you have turmoil in your life, even when evil seems to be stacking up all around you and death seems to be caving in and you see abomination in on the news, I mean, you know, God has been and is still in control. And for some of you, and I know this to be true, this has always been one of your big hangups, hasn't it? This has always been one of your big hangups with this whole Jesus thing. You may be hearing, you'd be like, you know, okay, Will, I, I get it. I, I've heard about Jesus before. I understand, you know, who the Bible says he is. I get all that. But how can you really expect me to seriously take a look around and see all the atrocities happening in all, all around us? Not just in our country, but in other countries. And to see all of these things in our world, see all these things on the news, see innocent people being slaughtered, see murder and rape and children dying of starvation. I mean, do you really expect me, and I don't know, because I've had this conversation with people before, do you really expect me to believe that God is still in control of all of this? And his answer is simply Jesus? Is that really what you expect me to believe? And for some of you, that's the big hang up for you. It's the problem of pain. It's the problem of suffering in the world because either God is all powerful, but he just doesn't care enough, or God is good, but he does, I mean, or God is good and he does love, but he just isn't all powerful enough because he can't do anything about it. And for some people, and you may be one of them this morning, this is where this conversation gets the most real, right? Have you ever asked yourself this question? Why, why did God even allow the serpent in the garden anyway, right? When you read the book of Genesis and, and you hear the story, you remember that God created Adam and Eve and the Bible says he created them in their own likeness and, and they were perfect, it says, in, in, in the garden. And, and, and then you know we read that there was this deceitful serpent in the garden who represents Satan, we find out, and he tricks and he deceives Eve into disobeying God and sinning. And, and then not only that, but Eve then uh, you know, causes Adam to do the same thing. And, and deceives him and so he also sins and, and we know that that's where sin enters the world because you know we know that at that point perfection you know God created and everything was good perfection is lost life in the garden isn't paradise anymore and because of sin we know that the Bible says that means there is death for everyone because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God have you ever asked yourself you know why why did God even allow that silly serpent anyway right well, the answer, I think, is found in verses 15 and 18 here of Romans chapter 5. And here's, here's the big picture, okay? Here's the big idea. Verse 15, talking about Jesus. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of one man, talking about Adam... How much more did God's grace and the gift, talking about Jesus, that came by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Skip down to verse 18. Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation of all, for all people, trespass just meaning uh, 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 sin, okay, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life 
for all people. Here's the really, really big idea. And if you miss this this morning, you've missed everything. Where sin entered the world through one man. And because of that, we are all guilty of sin. Because of that, our punishment because of sin is death. Even greater, listen to me, even greater through one man in Jesus who wasn't just any man, he was the son of God. He was God in flesh and blood and, and, and he was the Messiah. The Bible calls him the chosen one from before the creation of the world. You see, this wasn't just something that God thought up on the whim from the creation of the world. Through him, the Bible says, we can have everlasting life. Through him, we can have eternal life with God. That's what heaven is all about. Through him, talking about Jesus, we find forgiveness, the Bible says. We find redemption. We find freedom from sin and death. And death does not rule over us any longer. Sin, listen to me, sin does not stain us any longer. It doesn't trap us any longer. You don't have to live under the weight of sin in your life any longer because of Jesus, because of the cross, because of the resurrection, we can have victory and hope. I got a video I want you to watch this morning and we're gonna close in prayer. And so if you would, just turn your attention to the wall behind me. You may be here this morning and if you had to be totally honest with yourself, you would say, you know what, Will? I am tired of letting death rule my life. I am tired of letting sin weigh me down. And you may be here this morning and the Holy Spirit has just spoke deep into your being, Jesus calling you, the Holy Spirit calling you to God in relationship with him. And so what we're gonna do this morning as we close out our service is we're gonna have a, an invitation. We're gonna sing a song together. Before we do that, I wanna pray. And, and as we pray, I wanna ask a very special something to happen today. I, I would really love it if we could all just, and we don't normally do this, but, but could we all just bow our head and close our eyes today? Let's do that this morning, okay? Where you're at, if you would, just take a moment. And all of us in prayer this morning. And what I wanna do is, I just wanna give you an, invi an invitation that if God has so moved your heart today, and he is moving you to make a decision to follow him, maybe a first time, maybe it's a first time in your life that God is calling you to become his child, to become a Christian, to accept him as Lord and Savior of your life. Maybe he's got your attention this morning and it's because you've been far away from him You've wandered down some paths that hasn't taken you closer to God, but it's been further away. And maybe what God wants from you this morning is just to draw you closer to him, to cause repentance in your life. And repentance is just a big word that means change. God wants to bring a change in your life, one that will affect your eternity. And maybe that's what God wants to begin in your heart and life today. Here's what I wanna do with every head bowed and every eye closed. Between you and God and me, because I wanna pray for you. If God has so moved you this morning in some way, whether that's repentance or whether that means beginning a relationship with Jesus, you're gonna start pursuing that, begin that today. Would you just raise your hand? 
just between you and God and me, because I want to pray for you this morning. There is no shame. There is no guilt here at all. This is not a place of judging. Amen. I see those hands. I see those hands. More importantly, God sees those hands. He knows your heart. I just want to pray for you this morning. And what I want to do at the end of our prayer together is if you're here and you need us to pray more specifically for something, uh, we'll be up here. I'll, I'll be up here up front. And if I'm praying with somebody, one of our elders would come and love to pray with you as well. You can come to the front row here and have a seat if you'd like. If you're here today and upon us praying together here in just a moment, and, and you're ready to make that full commitment to Christ, you're ready, you've never been immersed, you've never been baptized, we have our baptistry here this morning, it's ready. The Bible says that today is a day of salvation, not tomorrow, not next week. You're ready, we'll, we'll do that today, we'll celebrate with all the angels in heaven. Let's pray together. Father, we just thank you so much for how you work and how you move. We thank you, Father, for being here with us. And, and God, I just wanted to just tell you how thankful I am that I don't have to run to you. You're already running towards me. And there are some here this morning that are finding that out to be very true, that no matter how far they seem away from you, God, you are right there waiting, arms open wide. There are some here this morning, Father, that are praying to you and their prayers going something like this, Lord, I believe in you. I believe in Jesus. I believe that he is the son of God, the savior of the world. I believe that he has come and died for me and my sins. He has come to give me forgiveness of my sins. He's come to give me the Holy Spirit in my life that is a deposit for heaven to come. And there are some here, Lord, that are making that prayer to you today. And they're giving their heart and their life over to you. They're saying, Lord, you take the wheel of my life. You take the reins of my heart. You do what only you can do in my life, God. I just trust you that you're gonna do it. And today is a moment, it's an ordained moment. Father, thank you for being here in this place right now. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, thankful, we're just so thankful for Jesus this, this, this morning. And it's in his name we pray, amen. We're gonna leave it up to you this morning. Uh, if you need prayer or if you'd like to further your decision up, I just want you to know we're gonna be here for you. We'd, we'd love to know if you have made a commitment to Christ in any kind of way today, we'd love to know who you are. Please uh, be sure to write that to us and, and, or email us, one of the two. You can come and find me uh, here. But we're gonna stand and sing one closing song today. And if you're here and you need prayer or if you need anything else, we invite you to come forward. I'll be up here. Like I said, some of our elders will be up here as well if you need that as well. Let's sing together. God sent his son.